Hello, Jesse Good here. Today I'm taking a look at the Lego Ninjago Legacy 2019 set, Cole's Earth Driller, with 587 pieces, four minifigures, and retails for $50 in the United States. Thanks to Ash and Flash for getting this for me, and let's take a look at those minifigures. We'll start with Cole, and I think this is the only way to get him in a regular set besides a spinner, so he is the least common of the ninja this time around. The design of him is really neat, though. I like that new dual-molded mask with the brown head wrap and then that uh, nice black design. All of it is just one piece, so it's easy to remove now. He has a back facial expression, which these are from the Lego Ninjago movie wave, and a better look at his front facial expression, where he looks pretty darn confident. Oh, and there's a little build for the Scythe of Quakes. There's Kai, which the design of this does come in probably the most sets out of the line, so it's kind of a contrast there with Cole and Kai. Not too much new or different here. He does have some back torso printing, the same new dual molded mask, or at least different colors. He has a more confident face there from the Ninjago movie, and then a more determined face there at the front. Oh, and there's also two katana for Kai. So here is the Stone Army Scout of the set, and whoopsie, whoopsie, doopsie, because this face print right here, I said was exclusive to the Golden Dragon set. I did a oopsie. The design of this is very similar to that one from the Ninjago Golden Dragon set, unfortunately. So I guess that exclusivity is gone. But we do have this new kind of, a, I guess a shoulder attachment would be the best way to put it. I like that. It's very simple, but it's clean cut. It's nice and I can see that being used in upcoming CM After Hours. So now that I know it exists. Oh, and you can also hold two red katanas that they give you. Now the Stone Army Scout does have a new face print from my understanding that is exclusive to the set. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But the design of this little crossbow right here is also a nice inclusion. I'll forever associate it with Chewbacca from the Force Awakens line. Of course, it shoots out the stud if you shoot it like that. That is where it first appeared, the Force Awakens line. Other than that, same torso print, same leg print, and even the same little shoulder pad piece that I quite like from that last figure. So nothing too special there. So here's the build of the set. First, let's take a look at that big stone warrior. This is another giant minifigure build in the style of Giant Man from Marvel and Ares from the DC Superheroes line. This one's a little bit more complex than them though because it does have two pairs of arms. This is because it's one of those figures that are like General Kozu or Garmadon where they have two sets of arms with one of them being attached to some armor-like design at the top. So from my understanding, this is the same character from Cryptarium Prison. So he uses that same helmet, or at least a design based off that helmet, because now it's brick built. There's a little bit of different coloring, but I really like how they emulated that piece using bat wings for the side. And one of my favorite parts is actually the back. Now what's interesting is that the other giant figures didn't really have too much detailing on the back. This one, however, does, and I love how they did the staircase-like build for the back of the helmet. Now this isn't the same piece that it's supposed to emulate, but you could kind of get an idea of it with the back of this minifigure and see how they translated that in this giant form. That's just really clever. Other than that, the printing on the face underneath is actually really neat. It's gotta remove the front of the mouth right there to get a better look at it. And the whole head can rotate in itself. So it has 360 degree movement, just like a Lego minifigure. And I like that, it doesn't lose the posability of Lego minifigures. Actually, there's more posability than a regular Lego minifigure. All arms are on mini ball joints, so you could rotate them 360 degrees all around, each one individually to different positions and whatnot. Also, the hands can be rotated as well since they're on these individual Technic pins. So you can get different positions there. The top hands do hold these swords, and the bottom ones don't hold anything, just are really there for added effect, but it's a nice design. I also like how they did this whole breast plate or, or chest plate, which the design of that matches the ones that they use for Kozu and the, the stone army guy that this is based off of and, and Garmadon and such. Also, there's a sticker up there and two stickers at the top of the legs. And the bottom legs have two stickers and they move just like Lego minifigure legs, each one independently. And you can get some different poses if you do it right. There you go, the whole minifigure is standing like that. Not everything is perfect because the back, while well, this isn't a major problem since you're gonna be playing it from the front, while they had a great design for the helmet itself, these under areas right here with the legs and also the bottom of the torso are very vacant and they just have all these reverse studs showing. Now I know putting studs and stuff to kind of cover that up would bump up the price, but in my opinion, I don't know, it doesn't look the best from the back, but that is okay. The helmet, like I said, is really well done on the back at least. 
And that's it for this minifigure, or sorry, giant figure. And let's take a look at the other build. And here's Cole's Earth Driller. The design of this is an upgrade of a 2013 set that was only $20. And in my opinion, they've made this bigger and better. We'll start with the cockpit, which I think is a major improvement because now they use this awesome windshield piece right here, which has some printing on it. Those aren't stickers whatsoever, which is cool. And inside you could fit two minifigures this time around, not just the coal. If you remove the minifigures, there's some detailing with some stickers on the sides for control panels, also with the tiles at the edges, and then a sticker double cheese slope. So there's a lot of details on how he controls this, and they don't use any sticks or anything like that. I actually like the printed little control panels better than that little control stick. Close that up. And on the sides this time around, they've added so much more detailing because the last one just had a flat sides. These, they add these little rock pieces, which are neat. And they have a little stud shooter, which if you press, shoots out the stud very easily. As with any Lego drill, as you push the vehicle, the front drill moves as its mechanism. That's all linked to this wheel at the front right. And you can see that whole gear mechanism going off right there. The drill itself at the front has two sets. We have this gray one, we have a gold one, even at the end, a little unicorn horn. So that works pretty nice. Both of those move opposite of each other for added effect. You can even spin them if you want by spinning the engine. And as you spin the engine, see the drill moving. And they've put a lot of more detail and pieces into this build than that older version with some little added olive green details and gray details at the front, as well as some parts with the engine at the back, where I really like how they built that part. And they even have a little bit of a flame going on there. Also at the very back, if you want to, you could hold the weapons of the set, which is quite cool as well. That's it for the drill build, and now let's move on to the packaging. The front of the box is actually really pretty. I like the background. And the back has some extra details to it. As for the instructions, there's two separate booklets. And at the end, there's an ad for the other Lego Ninjago sets for this wave, including the spinners. So overall, this might be the best Ninjago Legacy set. Both builds are fantastic. Cole's Earth Driller this time around is just bigger and better. Like, there's no argument to be made that this is worse than the 2013 version. Because unlike, say, the Golden Dragon, it's not a downsize. No, they, they upgraded it. They added so much more details to make it feel more complete. The Giant Stone Warrior minifigure is fantastic. I mean, I keep saying minifigure, but it's really a giant figure. I just don't like how the back it doesn't have too much detailing to it, but that's a very small nitpick. It's not a big deal whatsoever. Also, the minifigure selection is probably the weakest part. I mean, it's not bad. There's just like one exclusive figure and then everything else is just common for a $50 set. I, I wish they had either more minifigures or more exclusive figures, but the value is still there because there's a lot of pieces in this set. The builds feel like it's like a $60 set altogether, but it's $10 cheaper than that. So I'll rate this one an A, one of the best sets of January 2019. Really love how this came out, but let me know what you guys think. Am I completely wrong? Am I off base? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.